weeks back i saw sri lankan students getting position at mit before getting the a level results i mean these are the things that we have to be very progressive whether a level is required to do higher education i mean if the number one tech university in the world is doing that why we are waiting for that Hemindra Jayavera is director of planning and operations at SLTC Research University and he's here in the studio today with us to discuss education policy reforms and the role of the private sector in higher education this is Echelon's Reboot Everything Festival I mean the, to start with you know as you see it what are the challenges confronting university education in sri lanka especially in the context of the economic challenges the country is currently facing yeah i think it's uh, uh from the government side say for the government sector obviously government expenditure will have to be cut down on various things so mm. obviously government universities will face that then if you look at the students right even if you are getting full free sort of education but still they have to spend on um, food accommodation to travel to, to all that so i think that will affect students really uh, in a in a big scale because these are the students like 19 to 22 age group parents are not well off in terms of you know maybe they are in the latter stage of their working life and things like that so it's very difficult to fund them on big scale and these are the students who can't afford while studying going into like full time work also so then there's a big issue in terms of when they the usual expenses of lodging to all that so i think that will affect them and we can see that some of the universities even the government sector they had to cut down because of the issues in the not the education education you can do maybe online or whatever but the expenses in the canteen to food to all that and even traveling as well so i think those are the things that initially you will see but in addition you will see there's the effect in long term like the ranking system because the ranking system in any ranking model will work on the research mm. how much of research that sure. you do yeah and obviously there's a reduction in the research you do uh, because of people can't get into the universities you can't do i mean you can't do online research right i mean maybe only it sector can do that so there's a overall effect on the education system higher education system because of the crisis what do you think uh, sri lanka and sri lankan higher education sector can do to improve access the relevance and standards of university education in the country you think i think uh, one of the things that we have to look at is obviously the government can't cater the entire higher education system we have 500000 around 500000 students who is sitting for all level exams maybe half of that's uh, sitting for a level exams but if you look at the numbers only 25000 positions in the government sector for universities through the a level uh, you know cut off marks and things like that so that's about 5% of the entire that so we take as a batch that's only what is affordable then the rest of the onus comes to maybe other tertiary education the private sector education plus i know for fact that about 25000 people go out of sri lanka for for higher education that is the government seats that is available sure so i think uh, in if you look at all these uh, areas i think more emphasis has to be given to private sector okay. uh, going forward because it's very profitable uh, in you know industry if you really look at it uh, i mean it's if you look at it holistically not just for locals but if you can create the situation where we can bring uh, even outsiders say south asian students also to sri lanka in that that context and also education has changed really dramatically i think maybe thanks to even covid also we were looking at um, maybe 20 30 years ago it was delivery of knowledge was based on either you go and sit in a lecture hall the lecturer will tell you whatever that you had to you know tell and you will write down or you had to go to the library so that was the only two way that you can bring the knowledge uh, those are the two ways of delivery but now it has expanded to the next level online education is possible at least it was proven uh, during um, covid time knowledge is everywhere you can download anything so it's it's very easy in that terms of obviously there are cost in the online uh, systems and that, all that but then if you look at holistically uh, education is much easier compared to what it was maybe 20 years ago then you have to add the other very important factors in a say university or a, if you really look at what university supposed to do creating new knowledge so obviously then as research has to happen 
then there is other the quality university life has to be given for the students which is not about just uh, the knowledge in the book but you have to create someone like a wholesome graduate for example sports to other leadership activities innovation all this has to happen so i think that's the area that the university has to really invest in so i think in that regard i would say even with the current context that's an area that you shouldn't say that we can't invest it's a whether it's a government or whether it's a private sector a country should invest in that area i think that's the only way if you look at the the whole reasons behind the economic uh, downturn i think uh, we have been lacking these areas especially going into innovations creating someone a students not just for the particular profession but you know a wholesome uh, graduate who can really uh, turn around uh, his knowledge plus his other capabilities towards creating something new i think those are the areas that we have to continue to invest so in the context of what you are just saying what you just told me what do you think the government's priorities should be when it is looking at uh, reforming higher education in sri lanka if it were to address some of these challenges how do you put that into policy yeah the one thing is uh, for private sector higher education i think there are a lot of policies that need to be i'm not saying that you need to give everything out i mean you have to have certain policies certain uh, quality uh, and uh, you know checks by the government but you have to allow uh, you have to be more flexible in terms of uh, a private sector higher education institute to run for example few weeks back i saw a uh, sri lankan students getting a uh, position at mit before getting the a level results so i mean here we we can't do that i mean these are the things that we have to be very progressive whether a level is required to do higher education i mean if the number one tech university in the world is doing that why we are waiting for that i mean obviously there are certain reasons behind uh, having a method but then this is like the the other extremes that the the top universities are doing also most of the top universities in the world they are not waiting for a level results there are bridging programs where they can go from all levels to uh, then universities in sri lanka we can't do that and also uh, there are some very silly decisions silly reasons behind for example <clears throat> you can't do an engineering degree without doing maybe certain subjects sure but obviously there should be a change so certain subjects you have to do a level subjects to uh, getting selected to sri lankan uh, university even a private university uh, to do certain degree so i think those are the things that we need to revise sure. and also make sure that the private sector universities to build something little bit more flexible uh, in terms of uh, prov- provision because at the end of the day it's uh, sri lankan students who are getting benefited of obviously uh, they pay certain amount of money but then if you don't do that the same sri lankans has to pay a lot more than that to send their kids to uh, foreign university so i think that's where uh, the country has to have a uh, different model uh, obviously we know that the government can't give uh, 100% uh, education for 100% students uh, in in a one batch that's will never happen so in one way the reforms you are suggesting be done on so complicated but i suppose the secondary school system will have to adapt to be able to you know make this leap at uh, at the end of it exactly so i think it's already happening for example if you look at some of the private schools in sri lanka or semi government schools they are focusing a lot on getting into uh, even london a level streams to i mean if you look at say 3 years ago the percentage of students who did london a levels in a say semi government university uh, school has now changed like it's so many people are requesting to go do do so it's it's a in a way it's a bad for the country because these kids are now trying to go out of the country so that's the the plan early it was maybe 10% now it's 20 30 maybe 50% so i think the government policy has to be there so why they go for that extreme uh, selection is because there is no something in between so either you go for government universities otherwise you have to go for uh, foreign universities so i think the policies even at as you said uh, secondary schools or even primary schools the model has to be in a in a way that it will support the final uh, destination now for example uh, a level results of 2021 still not out now we are in the latter stage of 2022 it is august so that's those are the things that we should not allow whatever the economic uh, crisis situation right and then we don't know when the 2022 a levels is due nobody knows mm. so when these things happens people are now looking at okay government education system is not for our kids let's forget about it let's move on to uh, private sector so i think that shift is dangerous for a country sure and if 
if for instance the government cannot meet the demand for higher education by itself then it needs players such as yourself also to become a key part of providing uh, higher education and then you need to look at the investment climate see if this works out for the types of investment required for a pri- you know private higher education institution you know uh, how is that looking you know again is there a potential to improve the investment climate i think uh, one sector i mean i'm talking from the investor point of view one sector with all the issues that we we are facing right now one sector that is still very profitable or very promising is the education sector because uh, if you look at uh, i mentioned the numbers was about 25000 sri lankan kids go out of the country every year that's the number so these they are going to europe to australia to singapore to all these even south asian destinations for their higher education and that's a, obviously rupees going out of the country which is we are losing on our in, in terms of the balance of payment they all we have to spend on dollar dollars some are very high numbers but obviously with the current crisis situation maybe certain percentage i would say it's a larger percentage will not be able to afford that kind of education like earlier it was say 180 per dollar now they have to pay 360 almost double which was not pre-planned for these parents so then obviously certain percentage i would say big percentage will still look at education at least the next couple of years uh, in sri lanka so that that that's the amount that you know will turn back to uh, private education i think so that in that regard i think it's if you look at uh, someone who is going to invest in private sector education that's a big number you are talking about so it's another uh, maybe 25000 in the government sector maybe another 20 to 30000 in private sector another 25000 that goes out of sri lanka half of that that will stay in sri lanka for private sector education so i think that's the big boost for uh, someone who is investing in uh, private uh, sector education yes i mean there anything you think you need to add to around this conversation one of the things that i mean this is more long term obviously we should have done it maybe 10 20 years ago i think the education system has to be focused on research which is something that sltc has been doing is we want to create the first research university in sri lanka for no other reason because we know that education sector if you look at all the big rankings that you talk about harvard to oxford to cambridge all these universities they got that status because of the the research focus that they have but in sri lanka we don't have that focus even private sector and even in government sector the focus is more towards graduating which is also part of university uh, education uh, responsibility but i think the number one responsibility is the creating knowledge so i think in that regard what slt is trying to do is to create that i mean not about only us but we want to show the way to even other universities also there is a way even with all the issues that we uh, see here in sri lanka we still need to focus on that research side the creating knowledge part in a university which is the number one responsibility of a university so that's what we are trying to do and to show the way to other uh, higher education with uh, institutes also how to do it